Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games back with another cool pinball repair video for you this evening. We have been working on this 1971 Bally 4 million BC pinball machine for quite a while now. And if you didn't see the previous videos, go check them out. We had a customer bring us this. He had been having some problems with it, and we told him we thought we could get to the bottom of it. He had an issue where uh, when you started the game, it would uh, it didn't score right, and things would lock on, and a coil would burn up, and all kinds of stuff like that. And so we've been working on it, trying to get to the bottom of it, and uh, we've systematically been working through this game. So if you're working on something similar, this video may help you. Or if you just like old pinball machines and you like uh, watching us mess around with them, sit back and enjoy yourself. Now this is a 1971 Bally. Any Bally anywhere near this will be very similar to this game. Okay? If it's a Gottlieb from 1945, it will also be kind of similar to this game. They're all similar. They have similar things. Uh, so uh, if, if you watch the videos and you've got one, it's not necessarily that, that if you've got one with a problem, it's not necessarily that you're going to find somebody showing you exactly how to fix it. But if you watch enough of these videos, you'll learn how they work just in theory, and you can fix it yourself. So uh, that's what we're trying to accomplish with this. So uh, this particular one, though, on this video, we are going to work on the play field. Everybody's favorite thing. Now, this game is in pretty nice shape. It's a zipper flipper game. That's why the flippers look so weird. They are zipped up right now. They originally called it a flipper zipper game. <laughs> you, could, you could zip up the, the, uh, the hole between the flippers. Um, so that's how it's sitting right now. But this thing's in pretty good shape. Doesn't it look pretty good from here? Now I can start pointing things out that make it where it's not in such good shape. Like for instance, if you get really close, see all the wear on it? See where all the paint has cracked over the years? But, you know, you can't get too hung up on stuff like that, people. It looks good from up here. <laughs> um, the three pop bumpers, see the green skirts around them? So Someone has put green mylar around them. Now, why did they do that? Probably because the play field is worn all to hell underneath those green mylar skirts. We could take that off and find out. But I don't think I'm going to. We told this guy we would fix it for him, and he didn't really want us to go crazy on the cosmetics or anything and charge him for it. <laughs> and I don't blame him. It looks pretty good to me the way it is. Uh, one thing that we learned in the previous video is that this one has had the pop bumper caps changed. They used to say 100 points when lit. Somebody changed them to say 1,000 points when lit and then went through all the trouble of rewiring everything so that it works like that. So they didn't just change the, the way it looked. They literally made it score a thousand instead of a hundred when it's lit. Um, pretty impressive. Uh, so uh, yeah, we got to do cosmetics today. We're gonna. He's got a rubber ring kit. We're basically gonna install that. But the way I do it is, I take everything off the playfield. I clean it as good as I can, rewax it, and then put it all back. It's already in decent shape. But let's see if we can get it looking a little better. I'm curious, as the back of it back there is pretty dark, um, that might just be some bulbs are burnt out. We'll find out shortly. But all in all, this thing's in pretty good shape. It's actually a re-import. It says that it takes francs, which I believe is France. Don't quote me on that. If you, if you think I'm an idiot for not knowing if it's francs or not, it's because they all use the euro now. That's what's going on. It's not that I don't, you know, nobody uses francs anymore. Come on, cut me, cut me some slack here. Come on, come on. I'm stuck way over here on the other side of the world. Why would I know that? <laughs> uh, so we're going to clean it up. Um, but like I said, it's in pretty good shape already. We don't know how well it works because we haven't played it yet. But we'll get it, we'll get it looking good. And then in the next video, we'll fix whatever little stuff is still left. We've ordered some parts and things. Um, that we're still waiting on. But all in all, this is what we're starting with. So I'm going to set up the tripod. 
and we'll start taking stuff off. All right, so we've got everything popped over on this other game. Now, folks, never put it on a working game. If you're going to use a pinball machine as a table, it has to be a non-working pinball machine, okay? You'll never see the end of it if you don't. All right, so this is what we're starting with. No big surprises. There was a little rubber bumper that I think had been added right here, a post, that they had stuck in there kind of crooked with a big old drywall screw or something. I think the purpose of that was probably to make sure that the ball lands in the volcano because that's how you start multi-ball or it's how you lock one of the multi-balls. Oh yeah, that's right. If you're not familiar with this machine, this is an EM pinball machine with multi-ball. Designed by the great Ted Zell. If you don't know about him, go do some research. He, uh, he did really cool play field designs that were never symmetrical. We've done some here on our channel. I've had several before in the past. He's out of the, all the old school designers. He's my favorite designer. He had. Uh, I hope I'm saying his name right. Ted Zell. Yeah, whoever he was. He worked for Bally. He did really cool designs. So look at this one. You got the famous, you know, cross play field plunge. You have a ramp built into an EM pinball machine in 1971. Um, you have multi-ball, a three-ball multi-ball. Maybe it's a four-ball multi-ball. I can't remember. It might be a four-ball multi-ball. You have zipper flippers, which were his creation. Flipper zippers. Um, it's just a, nothing's ever symmetrical on his. There's stuff over here that's not over here, and it's just very creative stuff. All of his are like that. Now, if you're if you like the traditional fan layout, you might hate him, but <laughs> I like I like just how weird his stuff was. Um, the zipper flippers they did for a long time. You know he loved putting them on his, and then Williams ripped them off. Let me go show you. 
Williams did Student Prince and a few other games. And they stole the idea, but they called theirs Movable Flipper Action. And they made four games, and you know what happened? Bally threatened to sue the hell out of them, and they stopped. So, zipper flipper. Obviously, we need to replace the flipper shoes there, but we've got those. So, it's coming. It's coming. All right, so what are we going to do next? I'm going to uh, I'm going to clean the play field as good as I can. You think I should try something that we don't usually use? People are always asking me. We always clean them with magic eraser. And people are all and then uh, and people are always asking me, why don't you use Novus? Or they say, have you tried this kind of stuff? Blah blah blah. Well, I've got all that stuff. I just never use it because to me, using the magic eraser works better. You just got to do it kind of lightly. You can't go crazy, uh, or you'll damage the play field. But stuff like this ball track here, I'd like to lighten that up a little bit. I know a magic eraser will. So maybe we try a little Novus. What do you think about that? Try it a little differently than I usually do it. Huh? Huh? Let's see if I can get rid of any of these ball swirls on the Brontosaurus here. You know, he should really watch out. Look what the hell's over here. Look at that. Would a, would a Brontosaurus be standing that close to a T-Rex? Or is that a T-Rex? I think it is. Would a Brontosaurus be standing that close to a Tyrannosaurus Rex and just ignoring them? I don't know. I don't know if that would be going on. And then look on the back glass. Boy, they're fighting to the finish. It says on the Internet Pinball Database that there was a movie called One Million B.C. that was a British film. And in the film... I think it came out in 68, this pinball came out in 71. In the film, this happened. This fight here happened. And so supposedly this kind of rips that off a little bit. So we'll see. All right, let me go grab my cleaners and see if I've got anything that'll do anything for this or if we, uh, if we need to do it the traditional way. <laughs> Let's see what I've got and we'll compare results. Okay, folks, so here's our two products we're going to attempt. I've had people tell me that we're using the wrong stuff. All right, so we're going to try it here. There's a bunch of other ones, too, like Wildcat and stuff like that. But I've been told for years that this stuff works good. Now, you'll notice there's a little bit missing. So I wonder if I've tried it before. I have two whole bottles of this. CP100. I've also heard that this is good for control panels on arcade games, which may be what the CP stands for. I don't know. But CP, I guess, would also stand for Complete, complete Pinball. <laughs> complete Pinball Cleaner Polish. Now, I am not saying this stuff isn't any good. I don't know. I've never used it. I've heard good things about it. I don't even like doing reviews because I'm not the type to, like, talk bad about them. So you, it's hard for me to do a bad review, right? It says it cleans and polishes the dirtiest pinball machines. Well, you know, I don't think it's going to do anything with that, man. I don't think it can clean that. But we're going to try. Restores and protects all rubber parts. Now, let's look on the back. Guaranteed safe on all surfaces. Okay, that's good to know. One step cleaner and polish. No harsh abrasives, no waxy buildup. Tough on dirt and grime. High gloss, contains no water. Apply to a clean cloth. Wipe off dirt and grime. Buff to a luster shine. They also sell shuffleboard waxes. Liquid Speed Wonder Wax number two. Rapid Rebound plastic polish. Diamond Bright billiard kit. Anti-static surface cleaner. Sure shot. Twin slide shuffle puck and many others. They are at GeminiTech.com. We're going to try it. Okay, so I'm going to get a uh, rag. And just for giggles, let's see if it will clean up any of that 
ball track there and the shooter lane. So you see how that's all black? That's very common. That happens on a lot of games. It'll come right off of the Magic Eraser. But let's see if this stuff will get it off. So uh, I'll put some on a little paper towel and we'll get at it. Okay. Now, I bet it works good on like the more modern stuff. But let's see if they'll do anything with his old stuff. My theory is, and I may be wrong. But my theory is everybody keeps telling me to use products that work really good on Mylar. See how all this stuff says, you know, cleans plastic and stuff like that? I think they're talking about, like, play fields that are mylar or clear-coated. This is stuff, you know, there wasn't originally a clear coat on it, but... This is wood, you know? And we'll put a little bit on a paper towel. A big, thick paper towel. Let's see if this does anything. Smells good, I'll tell you that. I mean, did, uh, did it do anything? I don't know. I just, I, I think it would be good on plastics. That don't look clean to me, people. That's dirt. It's still on the play field. Nothing on the paper towel. So, I don't know. To me... Again, I, I don't like saying bad things about, about products or anything, right? But that stuff's like water, man. It's like you put water on it. Okay, folks, again, I'm not trying to just bash this company. I'm sure this stuff's fine on more modern machines. But, man, we're working on stuff that's old and worn and abused. It, it needs something a little tougher. So now we're moving up to Novus. Now, this is everybody's go-to. Everybody swears by this stuff. But look what it says. This is not a uniquely pinball product. So Novus is, so there's two, there's three versions of Novus. Novus number one, number two, and number three. I've used this stuff before, and it, it does work on certain things, okay? So... Novus number one, plastic, clean, and shine. It cleans, shines, and protects. Anti-fog, anti-static, dust repellent for use on all plastic surfaces. So what's our first problem? This isn't a plastic surface. This is wood, right? It's wood. So, uh, you know, that's the first thing. Now, if it was a more modern pinball machine, would this work? Yeah, because it's got Mylar on it, right? It's just as simple as that. Um, so that's the first thing. So this is number one, uh, polish number one. Gently cleans all plastics without scratching. Leaves a lustrous, lustrous shine that resists fogging, repels dust, and eliminates static. Protects against smudges and scratching. Suggested uses. Plastic windows and windshields, autos, boats, planes, motorcycles, stereos, TVs, computers, appliances, audio, auto interiors, Vinyl surfaces, chrome, that's cool. Bath accessories, fiberglass, marble, all industrial and household plastics. Okay. Oh, and here's, to remove scratches or fading, use Novus number two, fine scratch remover. For heavy scratches, try Novus number three, heavy scratch remover. Okay. But again, for plastic. I've used this on, uh, uh, pinball machine bezels, I mean arcade machine bezels before, uh, if there's a scratch on the bezel, this will clean it up. So like it said, you're not really, that's just kind of like the, fi the final product. You're supposed to use their scratch remover 
and then use that to polish it after you use the scratch remover. And if it's a really bad scratch, you use their heavy scratch remover. Removes heavy scratches. <laughs> I love how they do that. Heavy scratch remover. Removes heavy scratches. Fine scratch remover. Removes fine scratches. Okay, uh, so. Removes heavy scratches and abrasions from most acrylic surfaces. Contains abrasives, not for use on eyeglasses, polycarbonate, or coated plastics. Final finishing requires Novus number two. Testing an inconspicuous area, blah, 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 right? The number two says, removes fine scratches, haziness, and abrasions from most plastic surfaces. Restores faded and discolored plastics. Okay. Test in an inconspicuous area with an exclamation mark. Okay, so think about that. They having you use one, then the other, then the other. What's that sound like? It's like when you're using sandpaper, right? So you use sandpaper, you use a heavy grit, and then a medium grit, and then a fine grit to finish it up. So this stuff does work, but again, it's designed for plastic. This is a wood play field. Now, Magic Eraser is not designed for wood either, so, you know, there's that. But I think, I think whenever people tell me to use that stuff, it's just because they're used to working on newer machines. And on your actual plastics that go on the play field, it works really well. You know, if you've gotten scratches on those or want to clean them up, this is the way to go. Uh, so what I think I'll do is I'll set up the camera again, and then let's try using a little bit of the number two because the number one just says that it cleans and shines. It doesn't say anything about that it's going to get all that dirt off. Um, let's see if I use number two on it, if I can get some of that dirt out. And then uh, we'll put the number one on it after that. Okay, here we go, here we go, here we go. I'm going to shake my yoo-hoo. I bet there's something in there that's supposed to mix up. Put a little bit of it on this paper towel without making the world's biggest mess. Well. It has dried a little bit from the last time I used it. <laughs> Probably three years ago. There's a little bit. I don't want to go crazy with it. I don't want to go cray cray. All right. Um, you know, it polished it. I mean, it's got a nice polish to it. But it ain't cleaning nothing. So, I have a I have an old dirty magic eraser here. I just sprayed some water on. This is basically like very fine sandpaper. And as you can see, the magic eraser does what the rest won't. And you got to decide how, how far you want to go down in it, but basically what, what it's doing, it's, it's sandpaper. So it's basically taking the top layer of that clear that's got the, the uh, gouge cut in it. It's taking the top layer off of it. 
which essentially will clean it. You can use um, any kind of liquid with it, but rubbing alcohol works really well. And it's kind of, you know, I think that's the way to go, man. I think it, it looks a lot cleaner. We got the dirt out. You can still see the line, but it's, it's white. It doesn't look black and dirty like it did. So I don't know, folks. Maybe I'm not holding my mouth right. So this is how it looks after you go, get at it with the um, Magic Eraser. And again, that stuff is basically very fine sandpaper, so you got to be very careful. Um, you'll see it still didn't get all of the ball swirls out. There's just not much you can do with that without damaging it. You could go harder on it, but <laughs> you get to diminishing returns eventually. But you can see that for things like the ball trail, it's much cleaner. Um, and then there will always be areas with fade that just, you know, nothing's really going to make that right. I always thought this was, they did a couple games like this, fireballs like this too. They actually, they've made this out of one piece of plywood and then just bent a piece of it up. So if you look, see the grain there and how it continues on the bottom part? It's because it's the same piece of wood. It's just bent up about an inch. Very cool. All right, so it's coming right along. So I'm going to clean it off and uh, we'll see what it looks like with the haze gone.
Okay, folks, so we got it looking pretty good. It already looked pretty good when we got it, but uh, we replaced the flipper vats. He already had those inside. Got them looking nice and good. The play field didn't have any major damage anywhere. Um, I, I believe there's some under the pop bumpers that someone's covered with those uh, decals, but nothing really to fix. Um, I did leave... There was an extra bumper over here. I left that out because it's not really supposed to be there, but we'll see how it plays. We might have to put it back, but um, it's not original. Uh, got all of the uh, uh, gates and everything back on where it goes. Got the pop bumper caps back on where they go. We were talking about it being dark. It's just the way the thing's designed. Like I said, it's a Ted Zell design. I believe that's his name. This guy was creative as hell. So he put creative stuff all over the play field. But they should have put some lights back there. But they didn't. So there's no lights back there. To, they're not burnt out or anything. There were a couple out over here. Um, there's a couple holes right here. One, it looks like, is for a switch for this. And the other is for a bulb. But it... Uh, because of the mechanism to make the ball walk down, the uh, uh, they weren't able to use those, so they're not. The, the, you can tell they changed the design at some point. Uh, it's got little gates everywhere, so it's got this one, so the ball can't hit uh, go up here. It can only do that from the uh, the cliff, right? And so it can come out. And so that one apparently attaches to this metal piece. And then this one attaches to the back metal piece. I saw a lot of them online where they had them all on here. And it may have even been how this one was uh, when we got it. But I looked on the flyer to figure out exactly how it's supposed to be. There's lots of tall posts and small posts. And so it's kind of hard to figure that out. But basically all the small ones go where uh, they're under the plastic. The ones that are held that hold the plastic on with a screw are the tall ones. Uh, and it's a little confusing whenever they have like a double gate like here. I may have it wrong, but I put a tall one here, small one here, and a small one here. And then this one's on top of that, so it's a little bit higher for the tall one. But, nice and clean. Back how it was originally, I believe. But guess what? We don't have all the flipper parts in yet. Now, you may have seen the previous video uh, where we got the flipper parts in and put them in. But I haven't filmed the end of that video yet. That's right, I'm filming two videos at once. So when those get in, we will finish that video, which you've already seen the end of. <laughs> uh, and then we're going to do another one where we, we uh, uh, test play it, make sure everything's working good. We've got to install the bell. Surely you want to hear the bell. And uh, we'll give it a little run through. See if she plays good. I'll bet she does. I like the artwork. I like how it's just laid out weird. Oh, I was talking about the gates. So there's a gate here, so you can't go that way. But you can go this way. And then once you go that way, you can't come back this way. And the reason I do that is so that if this gate here is open, the ball will go this way. And if the gates close, the ball will go this way, so they can direct the ball. Um, very cool. And then, of course, they don't want you going up that way. They only want you coming down this way. And they don't want you going back in the shooter lane, but they do allow you to do that. I don't know why, though. I don't know why they do that. We'll figure it out when we're playing it, though. Like, why would you ever want where they can go back down the shooter lane, because... All you can do, oh, I guess because you get, oh, it's because you get another shot at the ramp. Ah, that makes sense, Mr. Zell. All right, I get what you were trying to do. Okay, so leave your comments below. What do you think? I think it looks a little better than it did. They look pretty good before, though. Got the awesome back glass, too. So uh, give us a thumbs up for taking the trouble to film it all. Hope you enjoyed listening to the music. Leave your comments down below. And we'd like to thank everybody that's been using our Amazon links. If you haven't heard about that, down below there is a link to Amazon. If you go to it, uh, if you want to buy something, you go to Amazon. If you click that link first, it gives us a tip for sending you there. So thank you to everybody that's been doing that. 
Um, and then uh, uh, we also make sure to check out my brother's channel on here, my brother Donnie, who is literally my brother Donnie. Um, he's always got something interesting he's uploading, so go check that out. I'm over there with him a lot of times working on old buildings and stuff that we're trying to fix up. If you like watching us work on old pinballs, you might like watching us work on old buildings, too. Go check it out, my brother Donnie. And then also, you can always check out our website. Go to lionsarcade.com. We have all of our games that are for sale up on our website. This one's not for sale. We're just fixing it for a customer. Uh, and we also have a parts page there where we have links to some of the uh, items we use, like the um, Wax and Novus and all that stuff. So <laughs> go check that out. And we will see you on the next video. Hope you enjoyed it.